Um, good evening, Rohit and Matthew. Thank you for coming over for this uh, session. I'm really thrilled to have you this evening to talk about your business. Um, so maybe just to uh, uh, start straight, uh, what does First Access actually do? What business are you in? All right, so uh, uh, I want to thank FSDP for having us here and being supportive for all, the year, all these years. Uh, First Access, uh, our mission is to pr uh, in increase financial inclusion mm -hmm. in developing countries. And the way by, me by which we do that is providing credit scoring for individuals who do not have much information available for them. So providing institutions, financial institutions, uh, a means to which uh, to cheaply and efficiently determine how creditworthy they are and distribute capital more easily. Mm -hmm. So can you tell a little bit more about credit scoring? You know, many people hear about this terminology. I'm not sure whether they have a good grasp of what this scoring means. Yeah, sure. So, so for us, you know, we, the, the way that we developed our, our product um, and what you know, Rohit is really primarily focused on is, is providing not just a, not just a, a theoretical scorecard, but if if I'm a if I'm a if I'm a borrower and I walk into a branch, we want you the the branch institution to be able to make a um, to to receive an assessment that leads to a credit decision. So the way that we do that, the way that our credit score works, is we actually, in addition to um, various sort of risk ratings, we provide a, a recommendation, um, an actual loan size, and we're able to do that because we build our models custom to each. Um, institutions individual portfolio so if I come into um, you know to, to one bank uh, versus another I might get a different um, a different loan size based on that institution's risk appetite paired with my individual borrower portfolio mm -hmm. so in, in this case so what what need and did you see and you know I think it's one thing getting the scoring but how did you find about this need and so one thing that we saw in the market is that when you're dealing with small loans and lending small amounts, your uh, interest rates tend to be very high. And that's usually a, a, a combination of two things. One is the perceived risk of the individual, so compensation for risk. And the other aspect is operational costs. If you're lending out maybe a 100,000 shilling loan and it costs something like 50,000 uh, shillings to actually underwrite this individual, then you have to charge in high interest rates just to even make the loan product viable. So for us, it was how could you do this in an accurate and an efficient manner? And so the way by means which we do that is to pull in alternative sources of information such as cell phone data, um, you know, solar power data, other information on the borrower that exists and try to come up with an informed decision um, based on that information to, as to expedite this process and just make it viable and more efficient. So what have you learned from, um, you know, uh, from product development that really makes what you're doing relevant? So I'll, I'll speak about the data side, and I know that Matt has a lot about the, uh, the, the operational side. I think there's a, a few things. We are, a data, as a data analytics company, it's important for us to look at all the data and to determine, to come up with key insights about which clients and which borrowers tend to perform in different ways. Mm -hmm. And this allows a company to be able to look at their portfolio and say, we're going to provide this type of service to this client because historically they have a acted a certain way. And so it allows the, so from, from a data perspective, we're able to see all this information very easily using you know, our algorithms and our techniques. But that's only half of the battle because we also need to make it operational. And so that's where we have focused a lot on human-centered design. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're, <coughs> we're, we're having this conference because I'm learning a lot about different techniques um, to use in terms of our, our engagement with the client because our role, with, we're, we're building a, a pretty fantastic team on the ground here in Tanzania, and our goal is to, um, is to spend time with our clients to understand um, sort of generally their, the challenges that they face in distributing capital in this market and how we can how we can address those problems. And, and we've we found that, that typically credit managers, they, they, they face a prioritization between the, um, their ability to, to, to properly assess a borrower and the cost associated with, 
with assessing that borrower. We, we sit down with credit managers and, and understand how they make that prioritization and where we fit first act, where first access fits along that credit underwriting process to help them address their challenges. I would also say that we're getting feedback not only from credit managers, but we, we do a lot of observation with the end users who are typically um, loan officers or back officers, back office users who are actually interacting with the service directly and understand more about how it affects their end users who are who are the borrowers. So so getting feedback sort of across the across the the, um, the value chain, I guess you should say, in terms of the underwriting process from the point of collection, the point of application for the borrower up through the, the credit committee managers who are using the score ultimately to, to make a decision. Right. So it appears that um you know, you have to make a pitch to these, um, you know, financial services providers. Mm -hmm. Not that are busy in uh, crafting, you know, credit-related products to them. So, what have you learned about, you know, pitching to them? You know, mm -hmm. what kind of experience can you bring out as you really engage these financial service providers? So, uh, one of the things that we've learned is that this is, you know, I think when we first started this company, we we saw that there was a clear need for this service. However, one thing that we've learned over time is how to develop the market to actually use this service. Because I think one of the things is that data by itself is not valuable unless you know how to use it. And I think part of what we're doing is really instructing people how to use data, how to collect the data, but then really how to make it operational. And so from our perspective, we have there's this kind of appreciation of data and then what and the correct valuation of their data that we've had to do throughout this process. Exactly right. I mean we um, you know one of our one of our challenges is certainly a, a certain level of institutional inertia. You know, we've been doing underwriting the same way we have strict operational and risk standards around um, our assessment practice. And so it's incumbent upon us to, to demonstrate, um, you know, sort of give them test results that the, that the model works and map out how much money it's going to save them. Because, you know, I think one of the things that, one of the key um, value propositions of, of our service is that we are driving down the cost. And so sometimes we have to actually walk through that cost structure and demonstrate if you have access to good information, which you are the bank, you the bank control a lot of that information and you have access to it, we can provide you the insight to, to issue that information at a point that can save you a lot of money. And I think that that value proposition speaks, speaks very loudly to, to credit and, and operations managers. Yeah, that sounds very exciting. Yeah. So, in terms of you know this session, uh, Phil Disrupt, you know what what is your key takeaway? How relevant is this to the work that you're doing? Yeah, I mean, I think it's <laughs> I think it's fantastically relevant. I mean, um, we sort of call it customer centricity. Everything, you know, we are. Um, Amitabh had a, had a great slide earlier about sort of what startup companies are doing and how they differ from. Um, it, you know, entrenched companies who are looking to execute on a developed business model. You know, we have a business model, but the way in which we are delivering our service has has evolved, and it's evo it's evolved because we're putting, you know, putting the product um, in front of our clients, getting feedback from them, um, and understanding how to how to incorporate that. I think, you know, yesterday's session of of really, um, you know, sitting down with the client, uh, with the prospective client, empathizing. Um, you know, creating a, a narrative around what you're trying to, to do for them um, elicited a lot, of, a lot of good feedback, and I think that, that was particularly instructive in, in creating a sort of uh, relationship, ultimately, with the, with the end user, which is, which is critical in, in building trust and confidence that, um, you know, we're going to build a product that's going to work for them. Thank you, Rohit and Matthew, for this uh, interesting time. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks. Thank Appreciate you. it. All the best. All right.